Economic offenses have been on the rise in the national capital as fraudsters are coming up with new and innovative methods to dupe people. At least six cases of check-related frauds have been reported in Noida, with a similar modus operandi used in each one of them. The Noida cybercrime cell is now assisting the Noida police in solving these cases, but so far they haven't been able to nab the fraudsters. Apurva joins me now with more details on this. Apurva, first tell us what is the modus operandi of this check fraud that you have now uh, been reporting on. Well, at least six to uh, six cases of uh, check fraud has now been reported in Noida, where uh, the victims, in fact, we've spoken to all the victims in this case, who have all said the same thing, that this fraudster who first calls them multiple times and then somehow takes them into confidence in either going for a loan or uh, for some kind of credit card offers or some other offer that has been offered, uh, that they offer. And then after that, they will send one of their uh, aides to their house posing as a bank executive. And here what is interesting to note is that they will always have proper ID cards of the bank which means that they actually fa have fake ID cards as well of the bank. Now after that they come home and uh, they take documents like the Aadhaar or the PAN, uh, other details including telephone bill, residential address. Now there is a reason why these four documents are taken which I'll come to a little later after which they take three to four cancelled check. Now here is where the biggest catch is. They give out their pen to cro uh, cancel the check as well as sometimes even uh, uh, sign the check. After which they take all these documents and then uh, four or five days later uh, the victim realizes that his phone is switched off. This is where uh, the fraudster would have called the mobile service provider, given him details like the uh, Aadhaar, PAN, uh, details regarding uh, a telephone bill, uh, presidential address saying that the victim's phone has been stolen or there is some issue with the SIM and that SIM needs to be temporarily deactivated. When that SIM gets deactivated, that is when they take that check, the cancel check to the bank and they withdraw. Now, uh, the victim, in fact, in this case, who went to the bank to question as to how can a cancelled check, uh, how can one or four lakh seventy thousand be withdrawn from his account? To his surprise, he saw that the same check that he signed and cancelled was the check that was used to withdraw money. Now, these fraudsters are using some kind of pen and as I mentioned before, the pen that they give out could be something like this, as simple as this. Now these are erasable pen, erasable ink pens and this is the kind of pens that they're probably using a little higher variety than this and there are varieties that come in the market as well as they're available online and they just simply erase the cancellation part, they keep the uh, signatures intact and then they put their name and the amount that this required. They give this check to the bank and they can easily withdraw the cash and this is the entire modus operandi that happens. So the moment they deactivate the SIM, even the message that is required, the message that is sent to that person, uh, concerned victim in case of any kind of transaction does not get to the victim because the mobile number has already been deactivated. Instead, the alternative number that they use is of the fraudster. So this is the entire chain that they follow and this has been similar for almost six victims, six cases of fraud that has come out in Noida. Right, uh, Apura, this is very scary and I'm looking at footage over here of you uh, writing on the check and then uh, signing it off and this is a pen that can be erased from what I can see. But tell us this, this means that essentially you cannot really hold anybody liable over here, you can't hold the bank liable, you can't hold uh, the, you can't file a complaint because technically you have signed on the check and that check has been cashed. Absolutely Kavita, in fact that is the most scary part and this is where people need to stay extremely vigilant because such kind of things could not be foreseen. Now, uh, first thing that uh, any, we were also spoken to a couple of bankers in this case who said that you really don't need to sign once you cancel a check. There are only very few situations where there is a, your signature is required at the time of cancellation. But most often than not, uh, once your check is cancelled, you don't need an additional signature. Now, this ignorance is also something that these fraudsters are taking into consideration. There 
are asking specifically all these victims to uh, first uh, cancel the check with the pen that they give and then even sign it with either their pen or with the magic pen that they have. So right now the need of the hour really is to stay absolutely vigilant aware because all these economic offenses are on the rise. We have seen how fraudsters are coming up with absolutely new and innovative methods that probably uh, the concerned victim could not even foresee or could not even uh, have a benefit of doubt at that point in time whether he is being duped or whether it's genuine because these people come with authentic uh, ID cards and that point it is very difficult for the customer to actually believe that this is fraud that is happening with this uh, with him and it is only after three four five days when he realizes that there is something wrong when his cell switches off later on when he sees the bank details that's when he realizes that a bulk of the amount has been actually taken off so these are certain things that probably now the customers need to be very very careful at a time when last fraudsters are coming up with very very innovative methods to dupe them exactly apurva one last question to you you did mention that the cyber crime cell and the delhi police are working in tandem to solve the case uh, what action are they taking uh, you've been talking to them about that well currently most of the sections of the ipc like section 420 has been uh, registered against all these cases because this certainly does not entirely come under the cyber crime the it acts are not uh, entirely put into it but the cyber cell of noida are just assisting the noida police in trying to solve these cases because there has been almost six cases and there hasn't been any breakthrough in these cases so far so they're just assisting uh, the noida police in trying to find the fraudsters who have been part of this entire uh, uh, incident now they haven't been able to narrow down of course they're saying that they're very hopeful that in the coming days they will be able uh, to catch these fraudsters but so far they haven't been able to make any breakthrough in this case